that's me destroying malice in today's video i'm gonna teach you guys how to obliterate malice with rise heal let's go welcome back to another video on Shrift gaming's channel even though it looks like sam's channel we are officially sponsored by supreme pro so i want everyone to give a big shout out to sam and uh guess what sam i own supreme pro now <laughs> we have three champions on the team we have sam mexico Cancun champ we have pack three time champ and we have universal champ myself so in today's video i'm going to show you guys how a champion destroys malice let's go massive news starting at november 29 thursday november 29 at 5 p.m all the way to midnight we're gonna be doing the riseal master class everything you need to know about riseal 50 plus combos in the deck every single thing you need to know that people don't know about i'm gonna release a brand new deck list that i'm gonna take to watch the anaheim with for every member that comes and it's gonna include six new level four extenders that solves the biggest problem of rise heal consistency without seven tachyon that no one knows about so if you guys want to go check it out come join that master class it is going to be for the very affordable price of 33 dollars for six hours of training check out the link down below enjoy the video see you there we're gonna be doing off ggygo go check out his page down below and i'm gonna show you guys everything you need to know about rise heal and about malice there's a specific intricacies you really want to know about how to play against the deck in my hand here uh, it's not the best nibiru is very good against malice if done correctly but you would like to pair it with at least one hand trap to have four it's funny with this deck it's you either draw zero rise deals or four bro i just feel there's no in between sometimes but let's get started and i'm gonna give an, uh, one more shout out guys uh to my absolutely massive arms with arms like this you think goku will allow to be defeated against malice who knows what deck's better yet because in the tcg rise deal is actually not the same as it is no cg because they have seven attack on and there's other cards such as scythe that's legal in this deck so they're able to actually search it via seven attack on and some other plays so who really knows if rise will perform the same in tcg because let me tell you guys in testing even though rise is very powerful it has real consistency issues where it's either you're drawing four rise or no rise deal quite a lot and I, I don't like the sound of that. I like decks that can play around in 30,000 hand traps. But if you do draw a, a decent or okay, this deck can play around a lot. My opponent here has a, a solid setup with, with many hand traps. And you're, this deck has absurd draw power. I summon what Pot of Greed to draw deck. three additional cards from my deck. That's not what it does. Roll my dice. As you guys see, like a crazy draw power, like absurd draw power. I probably would have resolved the lure a little earlier because drawing on this deck is very very powerful i want to stop that immediately just so that card can, uh, doesn't resolve it sets a uh, bluff and his Valor Valor ogre decides to chain the nibiru to not allow it to resolve because if you chain the malice to put it back and banish then special it back there's no card in the field so nibiru doesn't hit the field and that's actually better for me because x riser does not resolve if nibiru is on the field or any monster level fours on the field so all we gotta do now is play around three hand traps uh, i'm assuming this is the trap card one cool play guys to always 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 do when you play malice if you have a set spell card sorry if you have a spell card in your hand set that shit set it immediately start your turn by setting allure of darkness if you're not gonna use it right away because the opponent will immediately think it's one of the malice trap cards and it'll make them play around the board so significantly different so always set a spell if you can he has a lore here not that i knew i'm straight up assuming it's the trap card so we're gonna have to deal with valor valor ogre i don't need to blind in premiere because no card banished so it won't affect me as an interruption start up with x y z you'll send aggregate aggregate and negate very cool start triggering that as chain like one two adding now i have a full hand currently and this is looking uh, like it's going to be quite a problem for my opponent just because unless it is like on res there's no droll i have four risals in hand and like it's just this setup and, and bad hand traps like valor valor ogre it's gonna be quite easy i'm gonna show you guys how to do this going second a lot of people here in this scenario would go duo drive do not go duo drive now i'm gonna show you guys stay tuned to the end of the video because at the end of the video i'm gonna show you guys the deck list of how i play rise heal you guys see other decks as well and what i'm gonna do here ready i'm not gonna go into duo drive uh, i'm gonna do the best card going second with detonator the reason why i'm going detonator here is if you go duo drive that's no shit getting hit with a hand trap right obviously but at least if i can go detonator first when they hand trap my duo drive i'm able to resolve detonator to pop something it's a free value totally free value and then you go into ice rise heal and try to leverage the extra monster zone as much as you guys can uh, there are some scenarios where the main monster zones are locked with node rise heal and plug-in etc so if possible 
try to sometimes put stuff you're you are simply just not using your extra deck like your link monster in there unless you have a nibiru token like you're not going to go into donner or something like that unless you have a nib so feel free to use your extra deck zone as much as you can i'm gonna go dual drive a uh, second effect he's gonna go ghost ogre and this is gonna be a very cool play here detonator plays around ghost ogre so of course I'm this is totally new and it's gonna happen to the ycs i don't blame ggygo here if i'm gonna use dual drive's effect and my opponent goes over as well detonator you can just let that resolve detonator will simply just remove a material to protect does not activate does not trigger anything else and your dual drive just resolves try to do that play going second to play around the ghost ogre so i let him take it back because you know we were still we're just testing here so we're gonna go back and i'm still i'm gonna, I'm gonna go ghost ogre i don't even resolve detonator like if he goes ghost ogre on dual drive detonator effect pop something i don't even care to pop this because we didn't imp like it might be imprint you could chain it you know i lose the material for nothing so i'm smart in this scenario he is forced to chain the veiler he's forced to chain the veiler so by chaining the veiler on the dual drive i'm gonna chain detonator on the veiler the pop is set now because now it's like good enough time has passed so then i'm gonna chain if you didn't use the imperm on this allowing me to pop this i assume that was imperm it was a dead allure this now allows a game state of i have my two xyz's he's down to one hand trap like he just lost an ogre a veiler and a set and i lost nothing you guys see that if i just went dual drive right away that shows getting ghost ogre immediately so th this changed the whole complex complexion of the game simply by starting with detonator instead of dual drive such a small play results in such a massive impact and then because the ogre still is resolving i'm still opting to protect my dual drive uh, with the detonator because i'm going for game right now i'm not going to give him a turn on my no rise deal special he uses veiler now i know there's just one card in hand and one left i'm straight up just uh i could protect as well by the way i could in this scenario if i really want to i could detonator pop my own night no rise deal this is a cool of play with having detonator in the field you could actually to their veiler imprint pop your own cards it's actually very cool to, to play around cards but what i'm gonna do instead and uh, in this scenario is i'm just gonna pop his his malice and uh go for game i think the only card i need to fear now is bestial druid worm which still doesn't matter. like there's no play even if that happens scoops immediately have nib imperm as well for follow up and i'm still gonna get a rank four up if i wanted and that was game next up i draw a god hand here lancia and perulia against the deck however there is deck lockdown deck lockdown is obviously a broken card i start off immediately with perulia and he offers white rabbit i like bestials in this deck because you play it more combo the the bestials will never ever basically your opponent's cards you just basically your own it's quite good of an extender it's like two cards in summon the uh, lancia makes a pass the turn uh, i have to lancia before the trap is set because you can chain the trap banish effect effect so this is a beautiful game state for me a deck lockdown obviously hurts a lot it hurts prosperity it hurts the whole deck i open three ice rise jill what the heck i cannot special or add but i have a cool play in mind here that i think will help me get the most advantage i'm gonna normal rise yield and ice rise yield and special ice rise yield and and then in this scenario i'm gonna go into tornado dragon and i'm gonna enter the battle phase he could have a veiler so i'm not i'm entering the battle phase he has the reborn from graveyard malice so i'm going to enter battle phase use tornado dragon on the on the trap allow him to be under deck lockdown enter battle attack the malice this now allows me to have an imperm as well as a tornado dragon to help against my opponent in the end phase is gonna go druid worm but now I recognize something quite simple. We, we insta lose the game. There's no way you can come back from this. The deck lockdown really, really, really hurt. And opening three ice rise, he'll probably have something to do with it. Where if he goes Druid Worm now, he's able to banish the White Rabbit. Special Druid Worm. Spe White Rabbit effect will trigger. White Rabbit will then set something from the deck. It's just too much stuff going on. And he's not really affected by uh, the deck lockdown because it sets and not adds. So I'm cooked here. Guaranteed scoop right then. But it doesn't matter because Rise has such a great game one matchup against this deck that it's utterly irrelevant you're able to small world into lancia if you like so even though there's no seven tycoon to search lancia small world can search it so it's really good for us he opens uh, only ultimate slayer but ultimate slayer is very good against this deck i want you guys to see this play i just did there did i go into dual drive no i started my turn with dugaris there's a reason why dugaris materials materials in the graveyard is a problem of this deck as you guys are going to see as you guys play the deck a little more often having no materials in the graveyard dramatically hurts this deck and impacts what you could do with the deck and special summons from grave etc so i go through guards first to at least ensure i have cards in my graveyard uh to later do some special plays with node rise deal x add node node special from grave etc and the guards once it adds and discards is immediately a card that gets sent with no rise yield that's why Dugars is so good you don't need to actually get rid of a card from your hand with no rise yield so no rise yield special summon from grave becomes absolutely free so it's actually extremely good for that i go to Garis. i'm gonna discard my extra bonfire 
I opt to save the Fualo so I could small world the Fualos into Lancia. Fualo, everything in this deck with small world, bridge is amazing together without playing bricks. So you go small world Fualos into, Nib into Nibiru, into Lancia, or into any combo piece. It works so good by having uh, the Moltrami's in the deck. Uh, next, we're gonna search uh, Node Ryzeal with the X Ryzeal. We're gonna go Node Ryzeal, uh, Santa Special Thor Ryzeal, saving the small in case I need another extender later on, as well as the Bonfire. If I, if so, I'm just chilling. Then we go into Duo Drive. Now is a good time to Duo Drive because if Duo Drive gets hand trapped, we're able to just add the Ice Ryzeal or another extender with Small World uh, and summon then still end on the play and still have a good, very good hand. So Duo Drive effects will resolve here. I do not play the trap rise deal. I think the rise deal trap card is win more. Like if you already get to that point, you already win. So the trap rise deal is win more. Big time win more. So I don't like it for that reason. I uh, get rise deal across. I go rise deal plug in. I'm just going to attach something from the extra deck a uh, little later. There we go. I'm going to get my detonator three materials. I'm going to draw a rise deal across. I'm going to draw desires. Nope. Cross the designator even better. Then in this scenario, I'm going to just small world the Fualos into Lancia. Uh, I'm just thinking on my bridge. Yeah, I uh, must have side. I wanted to keep. I play one nib post side deck. So I wanted to keep the Nibiru in the deck because of Cross Out Designator. Just in case he goes something like. I know he has Rise Across, but I don't know. There has to be something he could do where maybe some hat trap that I have to be forced with. Maybe like anything. I don't know. I could have, I guess, keep it. But I just wanted it just in case. There was no value. I could have just got rid of the Ice Rise Yield. Get the Lancia. I'm going to set the call by, keep the Cross Out in case. Get some crazy play because it's just auto win and if you guys saw the last game i waited for him to activate some cards first before i lancia the only card that plays into is allure this time because i have so much advantage i'm just gonna drop the lancia uh because I've, you can't really lose in this scenario i get destroyed there to alt by ultimate slayer but i don't care because we have so much follow-up this is why like you kept the bonfire i didn't even use the bonfire last turn I just kept it uh, i have so much follow-up that i don't even care so i'm just letting him go because he, he really cannot do anything against uh this deck hard loses hard loses to lancia hard loses if he activated malice and i chain lancia i could get more value i don't care about value if he chain gold Sark, i could chain lancia and I just win but it's not about value it's about um you know just winning like value yeah it is about value but you want to win mainly so uh the reason why he's playing seems like the reason why he's playing teratops he's playing bestials like i saw some bestials earlier in the deck so if he goes cherubini send a mal like teratop i guess could equal uh any malice because if you go cherubini Banish the Malice. Uh, Cherubini, Bistial, Teratop, Takatambor, Main Cherubini, Cherubini, Send a Malice, Bistial, Banish the Malice, and you have full Malice combo. Uh, you can do the same with uh, the Reptile. So if you have any other extender on the field, just make the Reptile, Banish the Malice play. So it's a pretty cool engine that you could bridge like that. Gonna set the trap. Nothing to do there and pass his turn. My turn, I don't draw because of Dugaris. I dual drive effect, draw search two. I can't lose from here. There's no way. Rizio plug in, get an extra negate there for Ibiru, and now it's gonna plus like crazy. Yeah, you, you can't beat when Rizio gets to this point, you can't beat it. I right, tornado dragon that, allow him to set that. I don't care. X Rizio, I'm gonna waste my aggregator there. I just, oh, I actually already used it, I think. Detonator attach, node Rizio special. I, like this is just easy game that's game right there and i'm gonna show you guys the deck list this is the deck list playing maxed out of every single consistency card <laughs> 10 spells yeah three bonfire three small three desires one prosperity i do not want to lose the bricking on this deck literally it bricks bro it bricks anytime you're playing 18 hand traps and two cards that are just like required for engine but not starters three cards you consider node that's like 20 cards that are nothing to do with engine that do not help you combo whatsoever until like you're deep in the combo rise of plug-in is not an extender because you actually rarely like your duo drive is getting interrupted right since your dual drive is getting interrupted the materials do not leave the dual drive so rise of plug-in can actually special so you need a max out on every possible extender there's no i would play like if seventh tachyon was legal i would play three bonfire three small world three desires prosperity and three seventh tachyon i'll play all of that and then i'll just drop the uh, hat then this deck would be nuts i think until the seven tachyon comes out it's just losing consistency big time so i would if seven tachyon was legal i would just substitute three hand trap uh, three hand traps for three seven tachyon and i would run three small with three seven tachyon and then I, th then this deck would never brick by having three more engine pieces but until then bro i'm running this post side deck uh, i'm gonna go through the cards because don't know them so ice rise yield, x rise yield, node rise yield, no uh gold rise yield, bonfire small with desires prosperity you, i could see how you could think four pots might brick uh, bare minimum is three. I guess we play two desires, one prosperity, but it's fine. This deck breaks so much that you, you, you wanted to draw every single card. And I know what you're thinking, oh, but Trip, it has 19 starters. How does it break? 19 starters is so high. No, it's not actually whatsoever. Because if you start your turn with small world desires, your thode, 
your opponent um, or prosperity or like prosperity i guess you can start with but if you start with any even prosperity if you start with any of these before getting your, your combo start your combo the opponent knows for a fact you fucking brick so if you don't open any way to the pyro like if you normal summon throw rise you'll very clearly you brick bro throw rise is getting hand trapped immediately if it gets normal summon does that make sense if you start with X Rise Yield, Ice Rise Yield, or Bonfire, those are the cards you want to start with. If you start with Throw, that means you can't special it. That means you don't have a normal summon. You most likely brick. You're going to waste your normal summon on that. Bro, you brick. That shit's getting hand trapped immediately. If you start with Desires, you're getting hand trapped immediately. If you start with Smart Hole, you're getting hand trapped immediately. All these cards imply you brick. Hence, you really have nine real starters. Does that make sense? You have nine real starters. That's not a lot. That's why you have to play these semi. Like, they're still starters, Smart Hole, Desires, and Throw. They're still starters. You still get your engine, but it implies that you brick. It implies you're going to get clapped and hand traps. So you just max out everything possible. So when seven Tigan comes out, I'll be playing 22. And it's not just starters. They're also just engine pieces. Any deck will brick that has like 20 hand traps. They'll, you'll bound to drop four hand traps and like a fucking rise. You'll plug in. It happens so much with this deck. So just max it out. Trust me. You're, you'll thank me later. For hand traps, I opt the main deck draw. I think draw is so much. Uh, I know Mocharmies are great, but take this in, okay? Let's say you're playing the mirror match. Droll is way better than the Molcharmies in the mirror match. <laughs> Bro, it's... I'm debating not even playing the Molcharmies because it'll conflict with Droll. I'll tell you why. It sounds like a crazy... I'm going to make a video on this specifically. One Droll is a Mol... Like, Droll equals Molcharmie. However, you're guaranteed your opponent has zero follow-up. Let's say... Like, this is a follow-up versus follow-up game. Now, take this, this game state in. For those that have played at least... If you haven't played at least 50 matches with Rise Yield, don't, like, interact with what I'm about to say. But assuming you guys have... This is what you do. Ready? You're gonna go uh Pirelia draw phase. Okay. If your opponent also draws any Mulch Army with two, three hand traps, it's very normal in this deck, they're passing, you lost a card. So I know that seems like, oh great, fantastic, what a great card. I just made him pass. I will discard one card from the passer turn immediately as well. All right, but then you're gonna get hit with the Mulch Army as well. You're gonna get, like, not play, and the next turn he kills you. Right? I know it's not like like you again, let's say you get hit with Pirelia. Okay, you get hit with Pirelia, right? Sorry, I forgot one more thing. If you get hit with Pirelia, all right. Ice Rise so you just draw one. Ice Rise Deal effect special. Uh, make Baguska or Detonator pass. So you're dealing with, with with six cards. You're dealing with their hand traps and the Detonator. Like I know it seems crazy. It's not like they still end on something. The problem with this deck is when you get hand trapped, it's very tough to play, and you get on very weird game states. Okay, it wasn't a great explanation, but you're gonna end with like four cards, five cards. They're gonna end on still Detonator. Like it doesn't actually stop the Detonator from coming out. And I know it doesn't seem like it, but if you don't hard draw away to X Rise Yield. Detonator is very tough to play around if you don't have a way to X Rise Yield. And there's really not that many. When in comparison, you're also getting stopped by these hand traps. If you have Pualos, they you're still just drawing one or two, you know? Uh, they're not going to go crazy. It doesn't actually stop the Detonator hitting the field. And even though it seems like it because the cards are so broken, Rise Yield is... Unless you draw three Rise Yield cards, it's tough to... Or two Rise Yield cards plus, you're not playing into boards well. And I know it seems like you will because you're, you're playing so many engine cards. Most people play 16 engine pieces. You're just not. The 24 defensive card seems great. It's really not when you actually get to the game. When you get to the game, you're going to be like, bro, why did I just pass the one Valor? And Bozos know to never uh, hand trap. Everyone knows never hand trap the main deck Raziel. However, if they start with Desire, Small World, or Throat Raziel, I'm hand trapping the fuck out of that card well, as you recognize it. But it's when they start with these nine that you never do. Uh, if uh, they start with Desire, just Small World. If they start go Small World into Ice Raziel, I'm not hand trapping the Ice Raziel. But if they Small World right away, that tells me that they'll lo automatically lose the two or three hand traps. Uh, depending on the situation all depends on on the, the way there's no linear way to hand trap yes but i still side the multi-trimes because they're still broken i still play three drill six multi i don't give them i still do but in if the argument was what's better droll or multi army it's uh, i play one lancia because you could small world it you play four of them i play the one d barrier because not only could sometimes you cross a designator for d barrier if you're playing a deck like every deck next one will play d barrier but you can also thrust into the d barrier which is very vital it's very important because it makes it so your play around multi army sometimes is thrust the d barrier so having one D barrier with the thrust cross up comes up a lot. Uh, just to have the one D barrier for those. I play the one talent all for both cross out and thrust. So like cross out and thrust are broken next format. Uh, talents and D barrier are the cards you, the, like they're there for the call by and just the one duster. Uh, because realistically it's like three duster because of thrust. And you're playing a lot of pots, uh, so you can kind of get into it. Uh, I'm not scared of back row decks next format. Detonator destroys every every back row deck immediately. Just summon it and you win. Uh, also, this deck plays around floodgates very well. Uh, let's say they have rivalry on the field. You can only have uh, pyros. Bro, you just go ice rise yield into x rise yield into detonator, or you go x rise up from hand send aggregator and negate the floodgate. So this deck's actually pretty good inherently versus trap decks. 
that's the video i yapped a bit for near the end but i wanted you guys to really understand the thought process that you use on the deck thank you for watching the video i'll see you guys next video peace